swing by teaching you five patterns you need to know. What's up gang, it's Brian B. And Miss Megan. And in this video, we are gonna cover five patterns you need to know to dance West Coast Swing. Now in a previous video, we've covered our core three patterns. That's our sugar push, our passes, and our whips. You can find that linked up below here. Uh, for disclosure, we are doing this video live while we're here on lockdown. So it's a live virtual workshop where we can't all be in person. So there will be some live questions coming in. So if you're watching live, welcome. And if you're watching on tape delay, you're still welcome to type in questions and we'll grab them out of the comments. So the five patterns that we're gonna cover today, we're gonna cover them in two different ways. Um, one from the prospect of a new dancer trying to learn how to dance West Coast Swing, and the other one is from an existing dancer who may, might know these patterns but is trying to up their game. The five patterns are an inside turn, a sugar tuck, an outside turn, a reverse whip, and a rock and go. So we're gonna go in detail with these. Uh, we're gonna quickly go over the footwork, leaders and followers, and then we're gonna go in some detail. So if we move a little fast for you, I apologize. On tape delay, you can use the slow motion button and uh, rewind and live video. I'm gonna assume you guys kind of probably even know these, so we're gonna cover some of the advanced topics. So, real quick overview um, in terms of what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover what we call an inside turn or an inside roll. We're gonna cover a sugar tuck. We're gonna cover an outside roll. We're gonna cover a, re a reverse whip and then we're gonna cover something called a rock and go. And so those patterns alone, beyond your core patterns, I think are, uh, a couple of them are often missed. In your beginner classes, you're definitely gonna see the inside turn and the sugar tuck. You're likely not to see the outside roll or the reverse whip or the rock and go in a beginner class. So those are some patterns that I think are very functional. Any thoughts on these patterns in general? Yes, this is exactly what I teach after the first basic pattern. <laughs> Bingo! Because we've been dancing a long time together. So let's cover the inside turn. This is based off of left side pass. So if you don't know a left side pass, go ahead and find our video on a left side pass. We'll cover the footwork, but this would be a left side pass, right? And then we add an inside roll or a turn for the follower. We have what's called the inside turn. One, two, three, and four five and six. So I'm not going to cover the leaders footwork, but Miss Megan will cover the followers footwork because leaders, it's basic left side pass for you. I'll talk about the lead, but Miss Megan will talk about the footwork. All right, so followers, we still have our two walks forward. They are going to be a little bit more uh, prominent with each walk. So walk, walk. What I mean by prominent is you're going to be a little bit more over each foot, okay? So we're going to go walk, walk and now we're going to turn with three steps we have trip bull step and then anchor step let's do that again we have walk walk turn 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 and anchor step i'm going to do it from this side we have one two three and four five and six so there's a lot of grounds to cover and again if you're coming from a uh you've been a more intermediate dancer and you know this pattern cold, there's some things that we can really learn about it, but let's cover the basics first. So we have to what we call prep or prepare the follower for the turn. So a prep would be one, two. I've prepped by allowing Megan to go forward on her left foot, right? Again, let's cover this overview. We'll go back and add the details. One, we prep two. Then we curl this around her head and back down. So leaders, it's coming inside of our heads, around and back down. That's happening on the three and four three and four, and then bless West Coast Swing. It always ends with an anchor step. Let's do it one more time this side, and then we'll talk. One prep, two, three and four, five and six. So let's cover this. You've sometimes been taught to prep both steps, right? That prepping both steps would look like this. One, two, right? Where I move the hand as the leader slightly in, slightly away. Now, here's the thing. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's preferable in some situations, but the key is that I prep or prepare the follower on the second step. So the first step, she doesn't need a prep. She needs the prep on the second step. And by prep, I'm setting this hand out slightly away from me, right? Not a lot so that Megan runs out of space and she followed that correctly. That would be confusing for the follower. But also, I wanna do enough that she's prepped. So with good connection here through the elbows, through the fingers, I want to walk one and prep her away on two. We've got connection through this. It's wound tight. So she's now forward on the left foot and able to fire off the turn. So can you quickly cover like what you think about for the turn for the follower? Yeah, so, uh, can I borrow you? 
if we have one, two, if I'm not prepped and I'm flat, going through this turn is gonna be a little bit more difficult and you're probably going to end up being a little off balance. So make sure that you're getting one, two, and that your uh, right side is back, like you'd be throwing a baseball. All right, from here, I'm going with the leader's initiation for this and I'm turning right around and trying to just continue around as I start that. Good deal, so we also talked about the prep. Do we need to prep both sides? And here's my general rule. As you get better, you only need the second prep. So if you watch us dance this the way we would, you probably don't see the first prep. You hardly see the second because we're good and very well connected. However, you'll find me a lot of times in social dancing adding both preps because it ends up being a good clue. So I don't think it's wrong, right? You don't want too big of a prep because that means you're not connected at all, but it is not horrible to add one prep and a second prep to kind of clue your follower in that the turn's happening, cool? Uh, followers, if you guys are struggling with turns, we've got some cool resources. Just type in West Coast Swing, Spins and Turns, West Coast Swing Online in Google or YouTube. We've got some great stuff to help you out there. Next pattern in things that I think we need to know is the sugar tuck. So again, core basic is a sugar push or a push break. You can find that in one of our other videos or in the description below. A sugar tuck is where I tuck my partner away. So again, I'm not gonna cover leader's footwork because the footwork is sugar push footwork. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So let's have Megan cover the follower's footwork and then I'll show you why I include this in a pattern you need to know because there's something that people do wrong in this that I wanna teach you today. All right, so followers, we are going back to having two walks forward or really we have that the whole time this video. So walk, walk, you're still gonna go together, together. Instead of going straight back for your sugar push, we are gonna go away. And then we're going to uh, anchor around in a half circle for triple step. So if we did that again, we have forward, forward, together, together, away, and triple around. One more time with counts. We have one, two, three, and four, five and six. So there's two things that I think we kind of do wrong in general. So if you're a more intermediate dancer, these are some tips for you. And if you're a beginner, these are things that even we struggle to cover in our regular live group classes because we're so concerned with footwork and getting moving with everything. But lead wise, right? Uh, this is gonna come up to what we call a medium five, right? That's the part where you've probably been taught. One, two, three, and then it goes around her head for four, five, and six. But I want you to be aware of this. There's a little bit of a rotation or a tucking position. So leaders, not only am I raising the hand up, I'm allowing my follower in a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And then when I send the hand away, it has a little bit of a curve to it. So it should, if I make it big and exaggerated, one, two, I tuck in this way and then send it back around, around her head and anchor steps. That's tip number one. One, two, three, and. I send this away for four, we anchor five and six. Let's do it the other way, maybe you can get a different view at it. We have one, two, three, and four, five and six. Again, the reason why I include this is because this adds a lot of cool styling options where we can really add some styling to that tuck. Now, second thing that I think people do wrong is we ignore count four. So count four is a full beat, it's one whole step, and it should be a little moment in time. So count four, we're gonna freeze on it. One, two, three, and four. This moment in time, we still should have connection in the fingers. So Megan isn't finishing this turn and going ahead of me. She's pausing for just a little bit. One, two, three, and four. So I can use this connection to bring her around the corner together. Again, why is this important? Because later on, when we get to pattern five in this video, we have what's called a rock and go. And with that connection, I can lead the rock and go and get to some more advanced patterns. So that has your sugar tuck with a couple of different things you can think of. Any final thoughts on a sugar tuck? Yes, uh, followers, do not go to four on your own. Ooh, what do you mean by that, real quick? So one, two, three, and go. His hand's still back here. Bingo, so let the leaders lead. Yes. As best they can. Cool beans. Uh, next one, kind of working off that count four, is what we call an outside roll. The reason why I teach this, this is an outside roll. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Again, not 
um, taught a lot, but I think it's a good core position to understand. So leaders, it is a, um, I'm going to do it from this side, Miss Megan, I apologize, so they can see us. Leaders, this is right side pass footwork for us. So the followers passing on my right side, so I can go back and cross or back and together, let the follower pass. And again, let's have Megan break down the followers footwork. All right, so followers, when you're led into this, it's going to feel somewhat like a whip, okay? So you're going to go forward, back, okay? Instead of going forward, forward. So we have forward, back, we're going to step, turn, step, and then anchor around. So we're going to do that again. We have forward, back, step, turn, step, anchor around. From this side, we have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So in this uh, video, we've covered so far two turns for the followers, an inside turn, outside turn. And in the uh, next video, we're going to talk about seven different uh, techniques that people need to master. For the followers, spinning is one of them. So uh, right now, this is July 4th weekend. We are running a special on our spins and turns course. It's normally $149. It's on sale for 69 bucks. You can get that in, uh, we'll drop that in the description below if you guys are watching these live videos. Westcoastswingonline.com, westcoastswingonline.com forward slash workshops. And uh, the link will be in there. That is the best resource we have um, for spins. So what we have to do to lead this, leaders, this is a little bit like a whip footwork. We lead forward for one. We pick this hand up for two into what we call an outside turn grip. So that means my fingers are going the direction Megan's turning. So I have to turn my, my hand to where my fingers are going that direction. So I lead for count one. As I lead her back for two, there's a moment in time where she's in, in motion and I'm able to reset the hand. Now I go over and over for her head. Over and over and then anchor step. If we do it again from this side, one, change the hand, a uh, three and four, five and six. So for the followers, you have to master that footwork for the turn. And then what, if, you're, if you're paying close attention, count four is the same from the sugar push and the outside turn. And this is another point where I think we- The sugar tuck? The sugar tuck. The sugar tuck <laughs> and the outside turn. One, two, three and four. This is the same position where we still have connection in the hand, where we can anchor with the leader initiating the direction. And again, as we get to count step five of this video, we can add a rock and go to the end of this to create some cool patterns. So pattern number three is that you need to know to dance West Coast Swing is the outside roll. Number four is the reverse whip. So we all know a basic whip. If you don't know a basic whip, look up our basic whip footwork, put in basic whip West Coast Swing online. We got some great stuff. We'll teach you slowly and methodically. But the reverse whip, again, core footwork, the same as a basic whip for the leaders. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. But keeping with our theme. <laughs> Different foot, footwork for me. Absolutely. All right, so followers, for a regular whip, we are turning towards our leader. For a reverse whip, we are turning away from them, okay? So we are gonna have our two walks forward, so we walk forward, forward and then we're going to turn over our left shoulder for turn together and then from here on it's the same as a regular whip forward for four turn back for five step six seven and eight so we have one two turn three and four turn five step six seven and eight that is a reverse whip so leaders i have to go into my uh skill set my my box of tools to lead one, then I give her a little bit of a prep. So I'm kind of shaping my turn, a little bit of a prep, like we talked about the inside turn, right? Where the hand moved a little bit this way to prep the follower. That's the same thing, not too far, but a little bit of a prep, one, two. Now there's a bunch of different ways to dance this pattern, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this hand inside our heads and pick up her back like a basic whip, three and. Then we're gonna step across for four, and the rest of this is basic whip stuff, five, six, seven and eight. Let's do it one more time from this side. One, we prep. Two, we're still connected the hand. Again, key is I'm looking at my wristwatch so I can use my fingers to curl Megan around. Three and she's connected in a way she doesn't step forward until I step across. Four, five, six, seven and eight. Let's do that from the other side. One, two, 
three and four and five, six, seven, and eight. Followers, um, this one's going to be, maybe from this side? Yep. Important that you're lifting your elbow just right up and over. So you'll be able to feel where their hand is on your back so you have a relative idea of where their arm is. And then I'm just gonna, if we move this way just a little bit, I'm just gonna slip my elbow up and over. Let's see from this side, you can see well. Yeah, I didn't pick well. So one, two. So I'm gonna be proactive as the leader and get my right hand on her as soon as possible. Three, and I'm gonna get myself out of the way. The, the sooner I can touch her back, the sooner she's gonna raise that elbow. Good basic rule, let's talk about that arm. What not to do. Uh, you don't wanna lift your hands or lift too high with your elbow. That's why I'm kind of saying you're just gonna skim right up and over and your arm is going to stay pretty level. And we see two things happen, either number one, the follower leaves the arm down and gets trapped. Yes, don't do that. Awkward, at least safe for me, but awkward. Um, and then the second one, probably less likely, is they freak out and they put this arm up to get it through. <laughs> but if you keep this elbow out, and I'll say this for the followers, the fear out is that you're gonna hit the, the leader by leaving that elbow out. But we are already this far away from you, so if you leave that elbow out, we're good to go. The worst thing that can happen, let's go from this side, the <laughs> worst thing that can happen, if you just leave the elbow out, right, not up and not a backhand, the worst thing that can happen is the leader gets popped in the chest. <laughs> That's the absolute worst thing, um, and it won't happen twice, and we're tough, we can handle it. So that is the reverse <laughs> whip. The final one, and this is kind of the fun one, is what we call a rock and go. So this is not a basic pattern as much as it's a concept, but it's an awesome concept to open up our pattern. So real quick, if we used a, let's do two sugar pushes. Actually a sugar push and an inside turn. So we dance the basic sugar push, right? And then we danced an inside turn. We'd have two relatively basic six count patterns. However, if we used a rock and go instead of an anchor step, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, we've bypassed the anchor and made the pattern more advanced. So by definition, if we do it, again, we'll do it from this side. If we do a, using a sugar push as our basic workspace, one, two, three, and four. What's next for every pattern? A, a, uh, an anchor step, anchor step. However, if I allow Megan, let's, we're on count four at this point. If I allow Megan to go rock and go, she is not now back anchored. She's jumped to count two of the next pattern and she finishes with whatever, how about a turn? <laughs> Sorry. A turn, anchor, step. So let's do this. I'm gonna put Miss Megan behind me. Behind you? Behind me, right? I'm gonna do basic sugar push footwork as the follower. Megan's gonna do the rock and go. We have one, two, three, and four. I anchor five and six. And you can see Megan's forward on her left foot, right? Stay there for me, Miss Megan. If, as the follower, I danced one, two of the next pattern, you can see we're now on the same foot. So a rock and go is something that you need to be aware of as the follower? Yep, they're very fun. And if you kind of recognize it and kind of go with being connected to your partner, you're not going to miss them. There you go. So um, the easiest way that we teach the rock and go, we have a full video on this. So if this is a new concept to you and you say, what is this rock and go? We've created the ultimate guide to rock and goes. So just put Rock and Go West Coast Swing Online there in YouTube and you will find that video. It's an awesome video. We cover it from every possible angle. But one of the ones that we'll teach, I lied, I'm gonna put you on this side. I don't know, I don't know what the best side is. <laughs> if we dance the whip, two, three, and four, five, six, right? Normally we'd have an anchor step. We can use a rock and go into another pattern anchor step. So that is pattern number five. If you wanna know how to dance West Coast Swing, you need to know your three core basics. That's covered in another video, your pushes, passes, and whips. We did that in the last video in this live workshop. Then from there, those are your three core. Everything's built off of that. As you could see, the leader's footwork stayed the same for a lot of these patterns. Followers, this is where you guys or gals need to learn a lot of different types of footwork, right? Which is why we covered this. Um, mastering your turns, the inside and outside turns. Mastering the position of the sugar tuck. Um, understanding a reverse whip and how that works, and then understanding that a rock and go is possible will give you a good shot when we come back to social dancing, um, how you can cover this. Any final thoughts, Miss Megan? Any questions uh, online? Any final thoughts? Any questions online? No. No questions. 
But sometimes in these videos, there's some fun uh, uh, live chats going on that might not be relevant to the topic of the video, so I don't get to hear them. I have to read them afterwards. And then I'm like, Ben, why didn't you talk about the, the dancing bear in the comments? Um, oh, we do have a question. Yeah. Um, can you discuss on the leader side how to use the leader's finger cut inside the cup of the hollow hand? So can we discuss how the leader's fingers work inside the cup of the hand? And we'll cozy up to the video a little bit. Is this cozy pretty well? So typically speaking, the follower's hand is curved around, right? The leader's hand is underneath. Now you can use all of your fingers. The typical way for West Coast Swing is to remove that index finger right there. So in essence, I'm connecting with these two fingers. If I had big hands, please forgive me, I'd be using the middle finger. I will not show you what that looks like. But I have smaller hands, so I use these two fingers connected there. So we have a drill we call baby steps, which is how to practice the arms and hands without doing patterns. So if I'm practicing an inside turn where the hand comes inside, I would turn this hand over, I would rotate my hand within the cup. We call this cup and pin. So Megan's hand is the cup, I am the pin, and I can rotate my hand so the back of my hand uh, is this direction and my fingers are going that direction, and I can rotate her around. So the inside turn or inside rotation where the hand goes this way, that would be an inside turn, a right side pass, a reverse whip, is a natural kind of arm movement because the hand never needs to ungrip. It just stays there. If you notice, I'm rotating my hand. So that's the drill to practice the inside turn. The outside turn requires a flip, or it's a two-step process. I have to raise the hand, and then on a, in a split second, I have to change my fingers. So Megan still, in, in essence, creates that cup, right? She still creates that cup. I raise the hand and then flip inside of that. And she has to allow for that, meaning no thumbs. If you grip with a thumb, you are completely limiting what we can do. We can do some sugar pushes and some left side passes, but we cannot rotate. So the follower needs to not grip with the thumb, so she has to be relaxed with the hand so I can grip an outside turn. Now I lead the outside turn. So that's the hand grip that's happening um, on the sugar push or the outside roll, which is why I cover these. That's a great question because this is a, a tricky skill that you need to learn for West Coast. If we're doing the sugar tuck, one, two, boom. So if I did this slow motion, right, really slow. I'm initiating. I'm getting the hand ready. <laughs> then I'm leading the rest of the move. Does that make sense? I'm doing that all seamlessly, but there's an initiation. She's on the way. I have a split second. I'm not letting go of that grip, but I'm changing the hand to that outside grip. Three and four, five and six. The same thing happens on the outside roll, right? I lead and I'm worried about resetting that grip. That's the outside turn or outside roll grip. My fingers are going the direction that she's traveling and there is the outside turn. That's a great question. Any other questions? Cool beans, if you guys are watching uh, live, we've got some cool things. It's 4th of July weekend. We have a 4th of July special for all of our courses. You can get that on uh, westcoastswingonline.com forward slash July. Um, all of our courses are there. They're all on sale all the way through Sunday. You'll see the countdown timer before they go back to regular price. Um, if you're new to West Coast Swing um, and new to us, head on over to the website, westcoastswingonline.com. Enter your email address on the first page. You'll get 50 free videos. You will be part of our email list. Uh, there's over 15,000 people that, uh, that get our move of the week every week. So we send out really cool, helpful tips. That's how we communicate that things like this are happening. Um, because of the current state of affairs in our social dance community, um, because we're not dancing, um, we have made some special masks and some other cool t-shirts and gear. You can get that in the description below. And, uh, there's, a and there's a discount. What's the discount code? COVID. Oh, we can't say that online. Might get ripped down for the... COVID is the, uh, is the code, is the 10% off code. So use that as the coupon code and you can get 10% off all of our swag. Um, someone wrote in, I like this t-shirt. I'm wearing it for all the videos. Um, so we're gonna be back. This is a live virtual workshop day. If you guys uh, missed this, you wanna catch up on all the videos for this live virtual workshop, westcoastswingonline.com forward slash workshop. Um, you'll be able to see all the replays to this. Next class is uh, seven techniques you need to master for West Coast Swing. Oh, next class is the advanced move where we're gonna use a rock and go liberally. Um, then seven techniques you need to master for West Coast Swing. That's gonna be an awesome video, followed by a musicality class, which was voted on very close vote, by the way. Um, musicality, styling, it spins and turns. Some of them were even tied. 
Uh, so our next live video series, we haven't talked about this yet as a team, but our next live video series that we pop out will be styling oriented. So we will not cover a ton of that styling today, but Ben is doing the John Travolta Saturday Night Fever, Saturday Night Fever thing. Yeah, so uh, the next live video series we do, not sure when that's gonna be, will be styling oriented and you'll see a lot of us in those videos. So uh, thanks gang, we're gonna hop off. We'll be back in five minutes with our advanced West Coast Swing. Thank you, Miss Megan, Mr. Ben, and Miss Emily. Uh, thanks for joining us for How to Dance West Coast Swing, five patterns you need to know.